Mr. Lord Chairman, thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to this extraordinary council meeting today, Thursday, the 29th of April. My name is Councillor Mark Hurd, and I'm the Chairman of Morgan District Council. This meeting is held under regulations which came into effect on the 4th of April 2020 in response to the COVID situation, and there's just a few housekeeping issues to run through. First of all, please could I ask everybody present uh, in this meeting to ensure that your microphone remains muted when not addressing the council. This will reduce background noises and avoid any unintentional disturbances. This meeting is being hosted remotely, streamed live and recorded, and by being present in the meeting, you are giving consent to being recorded. And members and officers, during each item, please use the hands up function of the meeting to indicate if you wish to speak. I will then invite you at the appropriate time. Members are reminded that apart from indicating points of order or that you have to leave the meeting, the chat function should not be used for questions or any other purpose. When speaking and referring to the agenda papers, please ensure you reference the page or paragraph number and keep your contributions as clear and concise as possible. When invited to speak, please ensure you turn on your microphone. Now, if I may ask officers taking part in the meeting to introduce themselves, starting with Mr Dodson. Good evening, members. Paul Dodson, Director of Strategy, Performance and Governance. Good evening, thank you. Mr Holmes. Good evening, members. Richard Holmes, Director of Service Delivery. Good evening, Mr. Leslie. Good evening, Chris Leslie, Director of Resources. Thank you, Mr. Quelch. Simon Quelch, uh, one of the legal advisors here at the Council. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Lee. The Chairman, he's not here tonight. Okay, thank you very much. Ms. Hughes. Good evening, Cheryl Hughes, Programmes, Performance and Governance Manager. Thank you very much. And Miss Bird. Uh, good evening, Chairman. Good evening, Member Tara Bird, Committee Clerk for the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. I uh, can I ask, are there any other officers present, please, if they could identify themselves? No? OK, thank you very much. Tara, can you please now carry out a roll call of members to confirm who is in attendance? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Members, if you could just indicate your attendance when I call your name, please. Starting with Councillor Bassinger. Present. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. Councillor Miss Beale. Present. Councillor Brian Beale. Councillor Bell. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Councillor Boyce. Here. Thank you, Councillor Mrs. Channer. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, good evening, officers and members. Um, I'm present, Tara. Thank uh, Miss Bird. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Durham. Present, Miss Bird. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Present. Thank you, Councillor Mrs. Fleming. Present, Tara. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fluker. Present, Miss Bird. Thank you, Councillor Hurd. Yes. Good evening. I'm present. Thank you, Councillor Helm. Present, Tara. Councillor Hull. Present. Present. Thank you, Councillor Jarvis. Evening, Tara, Chairman, Members. Good evening, thank you, Councillor Keyes. Good evening, Tara, Chairman, Members. Good evening, Present. Thank you, good evening, Councillor Lagan. A very good evening, everybody. I'm present. Thank you, Councillor Mays. Present, Tara, good evening. Thank you. Councillor Morley. Good evening, present. And Councillor Morris. Good evening and welcome. Councillor Nunn. Uh, yes, good evening, everyone. Present, uh, Tara, thank you. Councillor Shaughnessy. Uh, good evening, everyone. Present, Tara, thanks. Thank Councillor Siddle. Good evening, Tara, present. Councillor Skeens. Good evening, Tara. Good evening, Chair. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Councillor Stump. Um, present, Tara. Tara, did you call out Councillor Jewick? Did I miss Councillor Jewick? Um, no, we've got apologies from Councillor Jewick. 
Oh, OK. Thank you, Tara. Present. Thank you. Councillor Stilts. Good evening, present. Councillor Swain. Yes, good evening, present, Tara. Councillor Mrs Thompson. Oh, good evening, Miss Berg. Yes, present. And I have just put in the chat, Councillor White is having trouble accessing the meeting. Um, I'm <laughs> not sure if anyone out there can help her. Uh, but she's having I think she it. might. I think she might be in, but I'm not sure if she can speak because I think I'm not sure about that. But I think she might be in the meeting from what I've picked. Oh, OK, right. Sorry. And as you were, That's I'll shut up so you can carry on with the roll call. Apologies, Miss Bird and everyone. Thank you. And, and Councillor Miss White. Uh, th thank you, oh. Maddie. Um, I did manage to get in, but I have to say my broadband's very ropey, so I won't be able to leave the video on. And I do apologise for looking a bit scruffy, but I've literally just walked in the door because the traffic was bad. But uh, welcome, everybody, and I'm present. Thank you. Councillor White, you are almost scruffy enough to be an independent now. Um, Tara, could you just confirm, Councillor Beal, uh, I think, uh, may have logged on. Uh, could you just check that? Not, um... All right, Councillor, Councillor Brian Bill. Are you there, Councillor Bill? Yes, I can see him, Chairman. He is present. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> OK, we'll move on now to uh, agenda item two. Um, can I have any apologies for absence, please, Tara? Uh, yes, Chairman. Apologies have been received from Councillor Jewick. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Agenda item number three, declaration of interest to disclose the existence and nature of any disclosable pecuniary interests, other pecuniary interests or non-pecuniary interests relating to items of business on the agenda, having regard to paragraphs six to eight inclusive of the code of conduct for members. Members are reminded that they're also required to disclose any such interests as soon as they become aware should the need arise throughout the meeting. If any member has an interest to declare, please use the hands up function now to indicate and I will invite you to speak. Tara, has uh, any of any members uh, asked to speak? I can see one hand, but I can't see whose it is. Uh, Chairman, Councillor Durham has requested to speak. Um, uh, Councillor Bell has indicated that she uh, has a declaration uh, in relation to agenda item six, mm. but she's unable to, um, I believe she's unable to, to turn her camera on. And I've also got uh, Councillor Mrs. Channer as well. Thank you. Thank you. Chair. I'll take Councillor Durham first, please. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, a non pecuniary interest as a member of Essex County yeah. Council uh, and uh, any Thank items on the agenda that pertain to that organisation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I have had um, uh, a message from Councillor Bell uh, declaring an interest in uh, agenda item number six, and I think that she will be uh, leaving the meeting at that time. Um, Councillor Channer. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I declare non-pecuniary interest um, and that I'm also a member of Essex County Council, um, Chairman. And therefore, um, well, I can't go into any greater detail on that because it relates more to a private and confidential item. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Tara, have, uh, I can't see anybody. Anybody else indicated they wish to speak? Uh, no, Chairman, that's everybody, I believe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Durham and Chan, you've still got your hands up. Well, thank you very much. Uh, agenda item four uh, is about future committee option reviews and we move to this agenda item which is found on pages three to fourteen and in a moment I'll call on the leader to present this item. So members a reminder if you wish to speak on this item please make this known by using the hands up function and then I will come to you in turn. Please keep your points clear and succinct. Thank you. Leader, please introduce the report. OK, thank you, Chair. Thank you, members. Uh, well, we all hopefully have received a copy of the High Court challenge yesterday that uh, um, was decided. Uh, and obviously that we have to go to face to face meetings from the 7th of May. Um, I'll read the recommendations. Obviously, little one on the recommendations on the report members is no longer um, 
necessary because it's not happened. So I'm yeah. going to go to uh, little two, but A, B and C in order. And then I'm going to ask uh, Mr Dodson to present and give the information for the report. And then members will be able to debate it. So this um, A is that members move the physical statutory annual meeting to a start time of 11 a.m. to allow for this to take place and an outside venue with the wider staff on site to support. B, members, is that members review the future me meetings option in section 3.10.6 below and identify a preferred option having regard to the risks set out at Appendix A and accept any costs and that will be a budget pressure for the year. And C, that members adopt the guidance set out in section 3.10.7 below and additional guidance that emerges from risk assessments to support more secure physical meetings where they do take place. Now, I'm sure that some members would like um, some amendments going forward, but I'm going to ask Mr Dodson to present the report as comprehensively as possible for members. Thank you, Mr Dodson. Just before we do that, could I just have a seconder for that, please? Seconder for that motion. Um, I'll, I'll second if a seconder is needed. Councillor, okay, Councillor Mays uh, just got in there first. Thank you very much. Carry on, Mr. Dodson. Thank you, Chairman, and good evening, members. Uh, this report seeks to update members and to present options for future committee meetings. And as the leaders just outlined, unfortunately, the, the High Court dismissed the application by ADSO, LLG and Hertfordshire County Council in relation to virtual meeting provision, concluding that the original legislation doesn't allow for remote meetings. And again, as the leader said, this means recommendation I in the report no longer stands. So um, the review of options needs to be for those um, regarding um, undertaking remote meetings. Officers are hard at work operationally planning a, a COVID secure statutory annual council meeting for the 20th of May. There's a statutory requirement for the council to hold the annual meeting by the end of May and it will need to take place physically after the legislation expires as it needs to include the members who will be elected to the two vacant seats on council um, following the election on the 6th of May. As the planning work for this meeting continues, um, we'll be able to issue further information about how the meeting will run. Um, as set out in the recommendations, we're seeking to move the start time of the meeting to 11 a.m. And this is to allow for wider staff support with the new setup and public streaming, and also to allow for off-site venue availability. Um, this meeting needs to be off-site as the council chamber isn't large enough to accommodate a socially distanced meeting of full council. Following the annual meeting, there are various options in terms of how we make decisions going forward. They're set out in section 3.10.6 of the report, and these are ranked by score, which has been calculated based on achievability and impact. And members are asked to review these and to define the preferred option. For all physical meetings, there's an element of both risk and cost, and these are highlighted in the paper and Appendix A to the report so that members can consider the implications of the options presented. As part of developing these future meeting options, we have an officer working group including legal, lead specialist place, lead specialist community, and ICT and committees colleagues that are fed into and reviewed the emerging information. The guidance set out at 3.10.7 for member review and adoption is based on standard risk assessment that we've also been using for the elections and interpretation of the guidance for COVID safe use of council buildings linked in the report under background papers. We know this is a challenging decision for members to make and as officers we've been disappointed that the remote meeting legislation expired. Public engagement with our remote meetings has been much higher than for um, previous face-to-face -face meetings ahead of that legislation being in place. Um, and we've invested a lot of work to develop efficient digital meetings. Additionally, there are risks associated with a move back to, to physical meetings, um, but these are minimised as, as you'll see through the, the risk assessments. 
However, we invite members to review the information set out to identify a preferred approach for future meetings, with a further review to take place again as restrictions are lifted. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, so this has been seconded by um, Councillor May. So I'll now invite members to make any comments. Um, I can see that Councillor Stilts has asked uh, to speak and Councillor Morris. So I'll start with Councillor Stilts. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I do object to recommendation um, little 2a um, that the start time is at 11 a.m. because any ca uh, council councillor who works is not going to be able to attend that meeting. Um, and I think that stops us doing what is our statutory right and attending a council meeting. OK, thank you for that. Uh, councillor Morris. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to start with a little bit of a preamble. Um, I've, I've looked at this report and um, I think it's blatantly terrible. Um, recently, we have had two um, uh, items that revolve around vulnerable people that uh, officers haven't even seen fit to uh, look at. The um, previous motion from last month that I put forward about the food banks, not a single staff member has gone to see either of the food banks in the district. Chairman. They're writing. Excuse yeah. me, I'm talking. Thank you, no. Leader. Uh, I, 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 I said I was a preamble. I said it was a preamble. I, I'm, I'm going to have to Mr. ask Chairman. you, Councillor Morris, I'm going to have to ask you, please, to keep to what's on the agenda. I understand uh, yeah, your... It's a preamble. It's a preamble. If you'd let me finish, we'd no. get on a lot quicker. I will I will let you finish provided it's about this agenda item. Right, OK, let's cut to the chase then, guys. Um, if we could please go to 3.10.8. Now, I do believe that the author of this report, Cheryl Hughes, is actually in the meeting. So this is going to be a question for Cheryl Hughes. Basically, you have stated that um, anyone that doesn't agree to a medical procedure being done to them should be seen to have um, acted in di with disorderly conduct. So are you saying that refusing a medical procedure would be disorderly conduct? Um, I did try and speak to Cheryl Hughes about this previously, and uh, I guess what? I'm now not allowed to speak to any of the staff. Um, the, uh, the officers seem to be running this council. So I would ask the author of the uh, report, Cheryl Hughes. Right, OK, we've got that question, Councillor Morris. Thank you. Uh, Miss Hughes, are you able to answer that? Chairman, I'll take that if, if yes. that's OK. Uh, sorry, Thank sorry. you. Excuse me, Chairman. Excuse me, Chairman. I've asked the author the question. Thank you, Mr Dodson. I would like Cheryl, because she is the author of it, she will have the best knowledge of it. She wrote it. I would like Cheryl to answer the question, please. Thank Through you, you Chairman. Much. The, the you, report Councilor is in Morris. my name. I, I would like Mr Dodson to answer this question. Thank you. Mr. Can Dodson. I ask, is he the author? Is he the author? It doesn't matter who's the author. Mr Dodson it's is going asked. to retire. It's a question I'm asking, Chairman. Mr. It's Dodson. a question that I'm asking. Carry on, Mr Dodson, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the guidance set out is based on the government guidance um, that has been set not out. I haven't said that it's it's law. Thank, Thank you, Morris. I have, Morris. I'm having. I'm going to have to ask you, please, not to interrupt. You've asked your asked your question, and now Mr. Dodson is attempting to answer it. Please allow that to happen. Chairman, Chairman, I asked the question to the author of the report. You've not I even had the decency to, to Dodson, check. Is. Please yeah. don't let me lose confidence in you, Chairman. Please don't let me lose confidence in you, Chairman. I'm sorry, Councillor Morris. I'm running this meeting, and Mr. Dodson will answer Apology. the question. Apology accepted. I'm just reminding you that you might lose my confidence. Thank you, Mr. Dodson. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the guidance is set out under 3.10.7. 
this is guidance and it's based on government guidance. It's for members to decide um, how that guidance is interpreted. It's set out there and the report clearly states that there is an expectation for staff and member safety that um, members would um, comply with that guidance. Um, it would be up to the, the chairman and up to council to agree um, how they interpret that. Um, it would be most appro it would be appropriate for members not to attend if they're not willing to to meet that guidance because it's for the safety of all who are present at the meeting. But this is a decision for council. This is a report that provides the information to council to make those decisions. Thank you. Thank you very much, not Councillor Councillor Lagan. It, I'm not finished, sir. You cannot enforce. Sorry, I'm sorry, Councillor Morris. Had an opportunity to, to your question. I'm going to move on to Lagan. You cannot enforce or coerce medical procedures on people. It's against the Nuremberg I Code. Don't think, I don't think that that is the case. If you do not wish to attend, then you do not I have do to. I do know that's the case. I do wish to attend, and it is my democratic right to attend. I'm I am move not. Councillor Morgan. Councillor Morris, if you keep interrupting me, I'm excluded from the meeting. Without my consent, that is coercion. Please. Hitler would love that. Councillor Lagan. Thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Mr Dodson for um, the, the report. Um, and it, members, it's no secret that I'm a, a very keen advocate of returning uh, back to full meetings. Um, I agree um, entirely with Councillor Stilts about the daytime uh, commencement of meetings, because it is going to cause some complexity for those members that, that do work full time and have uh, other commitments. So I'm going to find it very difficult to support that. Um, looking through 3.10.6 for the options, um, I, I think that, you know, looking at the, the measures that we could implement to have uh, COVID safe meetings uh, are sound. Um, it, I think it's absolutely critical in the guidance notes, the, the guidance under Section 2, Core Principles for Safety uh, of Council Buildings. There's a lot of complexity and misunderstanding about the two metre rule. Um, you're allowed two metres or one metre with mitigations. Now, a mitigation can be a face covering, can be a face shield, can be a provision of seating, a positioning of seating, absolutely critical to have ventilation in the, the location where the meeting's held. Uh, people should have their own pen. There should be a sanitizer there. There should be wipes. Um, there could be people who have concerns about underlying health conditions. Um, the venues could be structured so there is a two metre standoff to give extra surety and confidence for those individual members um, and also one metre staggered seating plans if, 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 that, if that for members like myself who, who feel very comfortable about working into those areas. I have worked successfully going, uh, leaving my house daily to a place of work with over 200 employees. My role is to keep them safe, not just from COVID, but as, as in many other methods. So I'm speaking more from experience than from passion. Um, I do strongly feel though lateral flow tests uh, should be taken by each member in the afternoon prior. Um, you do respect Chrissy, you, you, that, that, that's a, a view. Um, I think people should have a lateral flow test prior in the afternoon before they, they attend the meeting. And if the lateral flow it's test does give a demonstration that there is a potential and that the person could be COVID positive, then obviously that person's obligated um, not to attend until they've had a PCR test. So I think that it's really clear for me that with the range of measures with an additional uh, suite of measures that I'd be glad to, to table and, and assist with, with COVID secure protocols, we could attend uh, venues, we could have proper meetings, uh, and we could start to get the business of the business done because we need to move forward. And finally, members, I feel very, 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 very strongly about this, because if we're prepared to send our kids to school, our key workers to work, why on earth are we not prepared to go into an absolute COVID safe uh, area that I believe the officers would, would secure for them and us and any other attendees? Um, and why wouldn't we do that? So I, I'd strongly recommend that we return to full committee meetings uh, in a COVID safe environment to be done 
and that, me that meetings are considered to be out of working hours. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lagan. Councillor Channer. Thank you, Chairman. Oh, sorry, I thought other people were before me, Chairman. The hands up. But if you want me to speak now, I will. Yes, I'll take you next. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, can I just, I think it might be helpful um, if you, uh, forgive me, Chairman, but for members of the public listening to know regarding uh, Councillor Morris's points, which he referred to that paragraph, so I, I go back to that, and Procedure Rule 10. Um, now, Procedure Rule 10, and I hope I've interpreted right, I take it that is Rule 10 of the Procedures of the Council. Can I have that confirmed, Chairman, please? It will be, yes. Can you just confirm that, Mr Dodson? So, sorry, Chairman, I can't hear anything. No, I, can you hear me, Mr Dodson? Yes, that's correct. It is correct. Procedure um, but, but I'm sure that the um, the monitoring officer can can provide um, a, a model answer on that. OK, well, I haven't quite finished then. If I, as I know, it's now Procedure Rule 10. Um, procedure Rule 10 to me is disorderly conduct. And it's therefore stating that if members don't do certain things, then as I understand it, um, it's going to be misconduct of a member uh, by persistently disregarding the ruling of the chairman or by behaving irregularly, improperly or offensively or by willfully obstructing. But I took that paragraph to mean regarding the things to do with having the lateral flow tests and everything to check, make sure we're compliant with that. And therefore, um, I wanted to know how we would be willfully obstructing the business of the council. Um, I'm sure all members are responsible. And if we do move to the full committee cycle, which I have to say is my desired outcome, I do feel that we need to. And I think actually um, at the, the meeting where we first had the first lot of options put before us, there have been some changes in the report what, uh, since that came forward. I'm one of those that would be supportive of full committee cycle with council and uh, the um, district planning having perhaps the, the outside venue, but the committee meetings could obviously be held within the chamber, bearing in mind what the report said. But I just have a bit of trouble with this disorderly conduct. If Hello, members- Carly, I can't get into any, uh, to the meeting. The picture's all right. I, I, I can hear you, Councillor Beal. Right, okay. Um, I'm not quite sure how I see this aligning with procedural tenors disorderly conduct. And therefore, not wishing to be as though I'm trying to make a point scoring or anything, what assurances will members have then if members are being told of disorderly conduct? Obviously, I have total faith in all the officers. They'd be doing what is required. But I think if we're going to have a ruling for members, we need to be clear that everyone's following the rules. And how would we check that? So it's just a point. So I'm clear, Chairman. I'm not being critical but I don't quite understand the disorderly conduct if members don't have lateral flow test wearing masks, because I'll certainly be wearing a mask, and I'm sure we'll all be doing what's necessary, but I don't quite get that alignment. Thank you. Thank you. Mr Dodson, would you like to comment on that? Thank you, Chairman. Yes. Um, is Okay. It wasn't mine. Could you, for those people who are not speaking, make sure that they are muted, please. Thank you. Um, sorry. Yes. On, on the the first point, yes, all officers present would be expected to um, follow the 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 guidance set out, and um, would be um, more than happy to, as far as I'm aware, from from those that we've um, we've spoken to. In terms of, um, sorry, I've taken the. The report down. Bear with me one moment. Um, as as far as procedure rule ten and disorderly um, conduct, um, if if council were to um, agree to this um, recommendation as set out, then uh, members would be expected to abide by, it and it would be cha the chairman down to the chairman to um, enforce that. Um, as I said earlier, in more detail, it would be for the, the monitoring officer, um, for, for Mr Quelch to give further guidance, but he has um, contributed to this report, I believe, and confirmed that that would be the case. Right, OK, thank you very much. Councillor Skeens. Yes, thank you. 
Um, uh, oh, sorry, uh, uh, Councillor Channon wants to come back. I want to come back on that particular well, point. Yes, Chairman, <laughs> now I've heard from Mr Dodson and my point, I would perhaps like the fuller explanation from Mr Quelch, now hearing he's had an input into the report. I'm just trying to align members perhaps not agreeing with the guidance, which Mr Dodson said was guidance, how the disorderly conduct comes in, which is willfully obstructing the business of the council and disregarding the ruling of the chairman. And it seems to do with um, um, a red telephone or a red box with a telephone. Three right. dots. Okay, just pause there. Councillor Beal, Councillor Beal, you're you're on speaker at the moment. Could you just mute, please? Thank you very much. Sorry, Councillor Channa, say I mean, again. Yes. Well, uh, but disorderly conduct is all about a member persistently disregarding the ruling of the chairman, behaving irregularly, improperly, or yeah. offensively or by willfully obstructing the business of the council. And yet we're told it's guidance, and I'm sure all members will be responsible and do that. I just need to be a sh a sh clear on the correlation of why members not doing certain things will be seen as disorderly conduct, because that has ramifications. I'm a penny talking. Right, OK. Um, OK, I do have a view on this, uh, but... Did you have anything to add on that, Mr. Dodson? Chairman, I sought Mr. Quelch to answer. Mr. Dodson. Mr. Quelch, Quelch. Sorry. Yeah, Mr. Quelch. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I did have an input into that report. Um, it certainly is, um, one could say, it's, it's a novel use of procedural 10. And I can understand members thinking, well, that, that, that's, that, that's, We've never done this before. And that's absolutely true. But if you look at the wording of Procedure Rule 10, it talks about two principal things, persistently disregarding the ruling of the chairman. Now, I anticipated, this is how I imagined it would go, that council say yes, um, flow, tests should be carried out beforehand. That's obviously the responsibility of the councillor. Uh, and masks should be worn unless there's a medical exemption. Um, now, I would imagine, Chairman, that you would therefore ask members to confirm that they have carried out a test. They don't have to say what the test was, but you would, you would at least be wanting them to confirm they've carried out a test and they've acted on that test. Now, if they are not prepared to give you that, that assurance, then you can say, well, then you should be leaving this meeting because you have not double checked that you will not be spreading a disease to other people. The second point is the word improperly. Now, where council has already decided that they're going to follow the government guidance and as a public authority, obviously, it's, as a public authority, it would be expected uh, that this council would follow government guidance on keeping everybody safe and avoiding the spreading of the disease, then for a member not to follow that would be improper as well because council's already determined. So there's on two limbs of procedure rule 10, I would say that uh, that means the rest of procedure rule 10 can operate. Thank you. I, I think I'd better make my point um, quite clear. Um, that there has to be uh, an element of cooperation uh, by all councillors uh, and staff. We haven't done this before. The reason that we're having lateral flow tests, the reason that we are having inoculations or vaccines, and the reasons that we're wearing masks is for the safety of themselves and others. And I would certainly expect councillors and staff to look after themselves and each other. I'm going to go now to councillor schemes. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, uh, um, picking up on councillor Morris's point, um, there is an issue here with these rules. I think we have to accept it. Uh, the, for example, the idea that we should all wear masks except when we're speaking, which is when we're actually projecting potential um, uh, <coughs> pieces of COVID is counterintuitive. Uh, and also there is the, uh, and, and I know that in certain councillors' cases, they don't actually believe that uh, COVID was a thing. 
Now, I know the government believes something entirely different, and I agree with the government entirely on this, but it does create a problem. And what I fear is we're going to reach a point at which we have a vital meeting to be held, uh, uh, which will be dis disrupted uh, because somebody refuses uh, um, and they have the right to refuse to believe that the government is correct in their analysis uh, and therefore um, uh, will refuse to wear a mask and you as chair will be forced to, uh, if that happens, you will be forced to take action and that could cause some serious disruption. So I think you need to think up hard about that and, and have plans in place to mitigate that if that is the way things unfold. I would, um, because you could view it as willful obstruction of the council if somebody doesn't wear a mask. Uh, but there are issues with this, and I can understand uh, 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 both sides of the of point of view. Also, um, the requirement for lateral flow tests. Some of us have had double vaccinations. Is it necessary to have a lateral flow test after a double vaccination? Well, I'm, I'm no medical expert, but what I can say is if you have... Uh, either one vaccine or two vaccines, it does not mean to say that you will not get it and it doesn't mean to say that you cannot pass it on to others. And that's why uh, you should have uh, a lateral flow test. All the vaccine will do, if you like, if it's raining, all the vaccine will do, will put an overcoat on you to stop you getting wet, but it won't stop other people. Uh, uh, so... If I may so briefly come uh, back, just yes, briefly come back. There's other scientific arguments that would contradict that, would, that would say that, in fact, like the CDC in America are basically saying that if you've been double vaccinated, uh, then the chances are infinitesimal of passing it on, of contracting it and then passing it on. But uh, I understand that this is the government's point of view and we're probably going to, and we're going to have to accord to it. But I do take into, you know, people have been discussing this ad nauseum for ages and it, and the and the whole of this uh, uh, pandemic has caused a lot of mental stress to a lot of people. Uh, so I'm just simply saying that, that there are two sides to this, though I understand we have to accord with the government's instructions. Thank you very much. Councillor Bassinger next. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I would like to say that I concur with uh, Councillor Stilts. I think um, a meeting in the daytime is certainly going to stop me coming for quite a few of the days. I mean, I can jiggle around things, but there's only so much and I do have to go to work. So I'm one of those that probably wouldn't be coming. Um, and I would also like to say, I agree with Councillor Morris. I'm not prepared to take um, these tests, which are totally flawed. Uh, and the same with the masks. Again, you know, put a mask on when you're not speaking, take it off when you are speaking. I mean, I know every one of us is a scientist based on the BBC, but let's be honest, it's nonsense. What's going on? I'm not saying COVID is nonsense, but the things we are doing to protect ourselves, it's nonsense. You know, do your hands one day, wear gloves another day, wash your shopping. I mean, wake up, smell the coffee, let's say. You know, I do believe in COVID, but let's be sensible. So if those of you that want to wear a space suit and go to meetings, it's cool by me, but then you should provide another room for those of us who are maybe less frightened and sort of a bit more realistic about what a virus is and how it performs. It doesn't, it doesn't come out of a nighttime and just go in pubs. It doesn't just behave like this. You can't take a mask off and put it on and that's your protection. Every time you wear a mask, you should throw it away. You should have loads of them. You know, so there is a logic. So for one, I would be somebody who wouldn't be prepared to take a flow test because I think they're flawed, which they are. But then again, that's just my opinion, of course. Mask thing, I don't agree with. I think that causes more problems than they're worth. I've had throat cancer. I certainly wouldn't want to wear a dirty mask for two hours, breathing my own breath in and out. So that would be another thing that stopped me from coming. So, you know, it sort of singles me out. The next thing will be the jab, you know, pin a yellow star on me or something as somebody that hasn't been jabbed. Well, that's my opinion. You know, I don't want to be jabbed. I don't want something which I've got no idea what it is being put into my veins by somebody oh, who doesn't okay. know what they're doing. Thank I, you. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want this to turn into a debate about, about COVID. I, I just want to keep to the the question about whether we accept uh, these recommendations or not. 
So thank you very much. I do not. Can, I move, now, can I move now to Councillor Swain? Oh, Councillor Swain, please. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, uh, for one thing, uh, um, I wonder whether we just leave out the reference to procedural 10. Uh, but secondly, we're talking about arrangements for conducting council business uh, where councillors um, have to respect other councillors. And if that involves taking certain uh, precautions against um, passing on a, a virus, uh, then they, they should um, they should be undertaken. Um, we could, um, however, I want to talk about the, the proposals for meetings. Um, in view of what has been said by councillors Stilts and Lagan, uh, perhaps Mr Dodson can say whether there is any possibility of an outside venue for an evening meeting uh, of council. Um, All right. no, can I just stop you there? I, I think uh, Mr Dodson might want to come back on one of those points. Mr Dodson. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I just wanted to point out that the 11 a.m. was solely for the statutory annual meeting that that was being um, proposed, and that was because of the the availability of the event of the venue um, that was the preferred venue um, that could be used that isn't available um, in the evenings. So it would just be for for that meeting uh, initially. Um, obviously, if we went to um, have committee meetings that were held within the chamber, then they could be held um, consistently at six o'clock, the same as, as meetings are, are held now. I did just want to, to respond on, you know, a couple of the, the other issues, if I, if I may, particularly that Council Bas Councillor Bassinger raised, sorry. Um, the idea of having two rooms was one that is not possible because of the um, the guidance from government that we can't hold it in separate rooms and stream it, which is why it would be much better for everybody if it, if it was streamed, because we wouldn't be having to face um, yeah. these issues. Um, and I equally respect, you know, everybody has different views on this, but um, as officers, we have to follow the government guidance and put that, that into the report. And we also have a duty of care for um, officers and, and to members um, when we write this to, to put in the government guidance, it's what we have to follow as, as officers and have to respect. And, um, you know, I have real concerns um, that we can't put officers in a position, regardless of, of people's views, where we're not following um, government guidance because we're responsible for their health and safety. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Swain, yes, you've got, you've got one minute left. Um, right. Well, given that it's only one meeting in the year and may never occur again, I agree with the proposal on the um, 11 o'clock start for the uh, the statutory annual meeting. I think all the committees can meet in the chamber except um, uh, district planning. And for that, I would suggest we, we have a um, cut down uh, membership of four from each of the area planning D chair, vice chair and two others to operate rather than try and hold external meetings for district planning. Um, as far as the council committees are concerned, I think all, as much material as possible should go through those committees. Um, and if, as I think is reasonable for the short term, and we are talking about a matter of a few months, we operate with an interim uh, management group, um, then they should they should limit themselves to only urgent matters that need to be decided on. But as council, uh, in the light of what can I, can I just can I just stop you there, Councillor Swain? Are you making that are you making that as a as an amendment to the proposal? Um, y yes, that, that's an amendment regarding district planning. Um, Otherwise, uh, I agree with the other recommendations and I agree with the interim measures group short term. We are only talking about a few months and the annual statutory meeting is a, a okay. one off. OK, uh, if that is a proposal, is that seconded by Do I have a seconder? Chairman, no. can we listen to the rest of the debate? 
Yes, yes, we're quite quite happy to do quite happy to do that. Um, Councillor Nunn, I think, is next. I'm not sure I was chairman, but I'm happy to go if you want me to. And well, any... I haven't got to, I haven't got an order. I've got a list of names of everybody, but so I'm happy to hear from you first. Thank you. I'm I'm probably um, being a bit old fashioned here, chairman. But uh, until retirement, I spent, as you know, 40 years working for a local authority, and I, I always had it drummed into me that you ignored government guidance at your peril. Uh, and indeed, sometimes the guidance was classed as statutory guidance. Uh, and I do feel sorry for the officers over this, to be quite honest with you, because they're between a rock and a hard place. This for me is not about personal views about the COVID or about vaccinations. It's not about personal views. It's about following government guidance. And we are an emanation of the government, whether we like it or not. We're a tier of government and we should follow government guidance. And I believe um, that um, there are there's built in uh, sections within 3107 that allow for bona fide exemptions, uh, for example, on masks. If you look at little bullet two under 3107, it says unless exempt so that there is a there are elements of built in exemption. Uh, so my personal view about this is that we should follow uh, the uh, guidance of the government of this country. And um, uh, the job is difficult enough for officers at the moment as it is. And I think we need to get the statutory meeting done and we need to get it done at 11. And we need to get it done in a venue which allows us to be safe. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Siddle. Thank you, Chairman. What we need to, to, to think about in terms of this is the practicality of it and ensuring that we operate as in the best possible way as, as a council and that everybody has their democratic right. One of the things that in terms of enforcing anybody who isn't abiding by the rules that have been stipulated, I think that's going to be extremely difficult to, to enforce how, who's going to manage that situation if someone doesn't abide by the, the guidelines that we, we've got there. Uh, we know from experience that it's very difficult to remove a member from the chamber. So, uh, yeah, we would be in a similar situation if something like that had to happen again. In terms of the uh, meetings, this is a, a an ongoing process it's not that this isn't a one-off process this is the first stage in us coming back as a council to meetings the guidelines and the rules will change on june the 21st so what we've got to do is ensure that this keeps changing along with any guidelines that come from the government so this is the stage that we're at the moment this is the the point that we're at, at the moment in, in terms of wearing masks we really should be wearing masks all the time if we're going to wear them wear them all the time in the chamber or wherever we're meeting. The, uh, I think it is uh, Councillor Bastard's point that taking the mask off to speak is probably the, yeah, if you if you if you yeah, it's probably the worst thing to do. We know now that COVID is an airborne disease and it's not to do with surfaces. So the key thing is 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 controlling the air in any room that we're, we're in. Uh, COVID cannot be picked up from touching a surface. That's been proven in lots of research now. Um, if, if the statute annual, if it's a one off and that's the only meeting that's going to be held at 11 o'clock, that's fine. I am concerned, however, at meetings staying at 6 p.m. Before COVID, we had meetings at half past seven. Having meetings at 6 p.m. actually makes it very difficult for all of us that do still have a job having to finish work and having to get to the council offices for a lot of members for 6 p.m. is going to be virtually impossible. So if we're going to have committee meetings back in the chamber, then that needs to be really at the earliest 7 p.m. and not 6 p.m. Um, or back to what it used to be, which is half past seven. Mm -hmm. And I think that we need to go back to the full uh, as uh, Councillor Channer said, we need to go back to the full committee processes with all the committees reinstated. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. I've got um, three more names. Tara, can you help me? I've got Councillor White, Shaughnessy and Thompson. What order are they, did they come in? Uh, I've got Councillor Thompson, Councillor Shaughnessy, Councillor Fluker, Councillor White, Councillor Jarvis, Councillor Boyce, Councillor Durham, Chairman. Thank you. And Councillor Morris. And Councillor Morris wanting to come back, Chairman. Thank you. OK, uh, Councillor Thompson next, please. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, I'll try and be brief. I can't help but agree with um, nearly everything that's been said. Some of some of the guidance, some of the rules are downright bizarre. Um, I'm massively disappointed, as I imagine lots of us are, that we can't just carry on virtually as you can in Scotland and Wales. You know, we're obliged to attend these meetings if we wish to carry out our democratic functions, but we can't choose to go to a coffee shop. Um, but I do think, you know, it, it behoves all of us to try and protect everyone else as far as we can. And, and while I'm not a COVID warrior, I do have a husband part way through um, a course of radiotherapy. So he's immunocompromised. Um, I'm sure we have other members who um, are vulnerable in some ways. I'm equally sure we probably have officers who are. But that said, how do we know that someone who said they've had a negative test actually has? I mean, I'm not saying anyone's going to lie, but we don't know. We don't know if people who have who aren't wearing masks are bona fide exempt any more than you do when you see someone wandering around the supermarket. The whole thing's a mess, so I'm just going to ask members, please, can we just try and look off? after everybody else, and especially the staff, because, you know, they don't really have a choice. Um, can we do our best to support everyone? Um, I will, in fact, second Councillor Swain's proposal to have a slightly cut down district um, planning committee, not necessarily because I agree with it, but, uh, you know, he's made, he's put the idea forward. I think it should be debated and I'll second it to get it on the table. Um, that's about it really i mean no no one likes any of this but can we please try and work together so that we can get back to the full committee cycle as soon as possible which is what i think we should do thank you chairman thank you councillor thompson councillor shaughnessy uh, thank you chairman um uh, councillor thompson has just um touched a wee bit on what i've got to say um because we need to be aware of all the evidence um, going forward um, and the lateral flow tests are mentioned in the text um, and I would just like to point out that there is much scientific evidence that there are false positives and false negatives um, um, to do with, with this test and so it does need to be taken into consideration um, should this be uh, the test that people are required uh, to take. That's all I wanted to say at the moment, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Shaughnessy. Councillor Fluker next. Thank you, Chairman. I, I, I mean, I've sat here listening to all of the members speaking about their own concerns. So you'll, you'll have to excuse me if I talk about our customers and our residents and democracy. Um, Chairman, if you, uh, if I could just take your attention to page twelve, and in particular measure four, um, which speaks to sixty peoples uh, allowed in the venue. Now, one presumes that includes some kind of staff from the venue and in our own staff and 31 members although i do sympathize with those that might not be able to make it 11 o'clock in the morning so um perhaps mr mr dodson or or, or mr hughes uh, could tell me how they are actually going to manage this because this is democracy you can't say to people who want to come to a a, a council meeting uh, whether it's the statutory annual or it's one of those complicated uh, planning issues which I think we'll be facing soon at the district planning committee and say look we're over the side um, but we can't let you in because there is no room so Mr Dodson how are you going to implement that thank you thank you Councillor Fluker Mr Dodson you want to come back on that thank you through you chairman um, public attendance can be via YouTube whilst whilst the meeting can't be held um, virtually, the public attendance 
can be via YouTube and we would be streaming it to ensure that the public have sight of the democracy happening. Thank you. Chairman, okay. would you allow me to come back? Yes, I, I, come back on I that, although I think that, the question I think has been Ms. Answered. Dodson, I, I'm sorry, Chairman, I, I spoke over the top of you and I apologise, but did you say I can come back? You can come back, although yeah, I think the you. question um, has been answered. I, I just wanted to pick up on something that Mr Dodson said earlier. Okay. Um, and I think he said he was disappointed by virtue of the fact that so many people have, had logged on virtually to watch council meetings. And, and I agree with you. Um, you know, if you do your benchmarking, this is not, uh, this is just not Morden District Council. It's all district councils and it's all councils throughout the country uh, at all, all levels. So um, that's a, a great answer and I'm pleased to, to hear it. Um, but can you tell me what you are doing um, so that moving forward and when we move out of the, the COVID regulations or to the next extension of them where we're going next, um, what are you going to do to uh, live stream all council meetings so that members of the public can actually watch it and listen to it? Thank you. Mr Dodson, would you like to reply to that? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, we are looking at um, hybrid meetings um, and the, the possibility to hold those if legislation allows, which would enable members to be either present or not, and also for all meetings to be streamed live to the public as well. Thank you very much. OK, I'm going next to Councillor Jarvis. Councillor Jarvis. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Sorry, I was having a bit of a problem there. Okay. Um, um, thank you. Uh, I, I just wanted to comment briefly. As far as the uh, 11 o'clock issue is concerned, uh, it, uh, I'm, I'm one of the people who's, who's working and working back in London very shortly. Uh, it's not ideal, uh, but I do understand the complications of, uh, of organising a meeting where we obviously want everybody or most people to attend as many as possible because it's a statutory annual meeting. Um, I think uh, I, I think somebody did just ask the question: you know, Is there an alternative to the eleven o'clock start? I don't think there's one in the paper, so I think it's. Uh, I would be interested to know if there is an alternative being put forward so that everybody could attend. I'm a bit old-fashioned, you know. When I see a time in the uh, diary for a meeting, uh, I organise my sort of work around that, and then we'll make sure I can make that time. And when the time changes, that. Uh, uh, it can cause complications. That happens to be a very busy day for me, but I will obviously try and reorganise. I would like uh, officers to say, you know, is there an alternative to 11 o'clock? So perhaps we can all, all make it or not. Um, and the only other comments I've got with regards to the other options that uh, are in the paper going forwards for regular meetings, I think the interim measures committee option uh, has the right balance of risk compared to member involvement. So that would certainly be the one that would have my support. With regards to guidance and expectations, uh, uh, I think we could be all night discussing these. And obviously, there are lots of views and, and understandably lots of different views. Uh, I'm very happy to go along with any sort of sensible, reasonable uh, um, proposal on that. So, Chairman, if I could just have an answer on the is there another option to 11 o'clock or not? That would be appreciated. Thank you, Mr Dodson. Is there an alternative time to 11 o'clock, please? Yes, thank you, Chairman. The the 11 o'clock was the recommendation made by the, the officer group um, that sat on this. There could be some, some flexibility around that. We would need to be out of the, the venue and cleared by 6pm. Um, and we know that the when we had the statutory meeting in November, it went on a very long time. Um, I would suggest that we started by 1pm, maybe latest, to enable the full meeting to happen and to be cleared up but there would be a, a bit of flexibility around that yes okay, <laughs> what i can say is that the meeting won't go on after three hours because uh, the council has already decided that that's the length of the meetings councillor jarvis do you want to come back on that if i may just yes i mean if the meeting can't be held in the evening which would be my preference um then if it is to be held in the day frankly the sooner the better so 11 o'clock or earlier um, from my point of view. So I think anybody who is working uh, might just, you know, take half a day off and be able to do the other half at work might be a consideration. So, but obviously I realise people have got to get the meeting organised and there's probably a lot of logistics. So it's a one-off meeting. So we'll probably all do all that we can to make it. But I'm certainly not suggesting it should be later in the day. 
um, 11 o'clock or earlier, or held in the evening when it was originally scheduled, would be my point. Uh, I think the only other thing, Chairman, if I may say, Councillor Civil made a very good point about 7.30 meetings. Now, look, for all of us who work, we all signed up as councillors uh, with a sort of time knowing when council meetings are going to take place. Six o'clock, I work in London. Six o'clock means I'll be taking a lot of half days off. I think uh, serious consideration should be given to the future for those meetings taking place when, when at 7.30. It uh, might not be as convenient for officers, and I do understand, or for other people coming. But that's what we signed up to, and I think uh, further consideration should be given to reverting back to 7.30. Thank you for indulging me, Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Boyce next. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I've not got a problem with uh, any flow tests. I've had dozens recently. Um, or um, wearing a mask, although I don't believe they're effective at all. Um, uh, my logic for that is that when I've got a mask on and I've and got in my car and forgotten to take the mask off and I put my glasses on, the glasses missed up, which says to me that that my plume is going everywhere anyway. Um, uh, but I wear the mask not to protect myself, but to protect others. And I, I believe that is the correct thing to do. If it's uh, some discomfort to me, so be it. I'll put up with that. Now, uh, uh, a matter of procedure, um, Chairman. Um, can I assume, I don't know whether Mr. Quirsch, whether you can answer this um, from your knowledge or Mr. Quirsch might be required. Can I assume that as we changed our constitution to have reality meetings, there is nothing to stop us um, dropping straight back into our old um, constitution? Or will we need to have some sort of amendments to it? In which case, there's not a lot of time between now and a couple of weeks' time. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Boyce. That's a, that's a fair point. Can you help us with that, Mr. Quelch? Uh, I, I can, Chairman, yes. Um, we had anticipated that particular uh, scenario arising, that we would have to go back to physical meetings. And so the Constitution has been drafted so that um, uh, there are rules for those meetings that are physical and rules for those that are remote. So there needs to be no change. And in fact, keeping the remote part of the Constitution is useful because if the government do make legislation that allows remote meetings, then we, we, can, we can operate procedurally, whether there are physical meetings or whether there are remote meetings. OK, thank you very much. Um, Councillor Durham. Yeah, thank you very much, Chairman. I think we are making a meal of this, aren't we? Look, the, the quicker we restore the democratic process for the benefit of our residents, the better. Absolutely the case. Um, Councillor Siddle is absolutely right. There's, there's no reason to um, have evening meetings in face to face at six o'clock. And as Councillor Jarvis has said, it makes it almost impossible for those that work. So I cannot see any logical reason when we return back to face to face meetings that they shouldn't be at, at uh, 7.30 as they have always been. Um, and as Councillor Siddler said, this is a, this is short term. We, we don't know how short term. I mean, we won't know until the 10th of May whether the openings on the 17th of May will go ahead as planned. And, and we don't know what is going to come after the 21st of June. We don't know whether masks are still going to be required. We don't know whether social distancing is going to be required. But we do owe it to our electorate to uh, to restore the democratic process. Um, in terms of 11 o'clock meetings, yes, it's not ideal for some members, but, you know, <laughs> county council meetings, every single one is during the day. So you have to cut your cloth accordingly. And if you want to be a county councillor, then you have to be prepared to to um, attend daytime meetings. And in terms of, of the requirements to uh, take a lateral flow test or to show an inoculation, I mean, there are certain countries in the world that you are legally required to have things like yellow fever jabs and certain inoculations. Well, if you don't want to have those inoculations, you don't go to those countries. It's a it's personal choice. Uh, and if the law says or if guidance says 
that you should have tests or you should have a COVID vaccination to access, be it pubs or, or wherever, well, you, you, you make your choice accordingly, don't you? So, Chairman, I cannot support the reintroduction of, of uh, the, an interim measures group. We do require um, the full democratic process involving as many elected members at meetings as can be facilitated. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor White, I don't think you've spoken yet, have you? No, Mr Chairman, I haven't. Um, well, firstly, I'd, I'd like to say, I mean, myself, along with probably lots of other members, I've been very ill for the last 15 months, but a lot of time in and out of hospitals. So I absolutely support these measures. In fact, I think they're vital. Whether they're going to be effective or not, I don't know, but I think we have to get them done. And I think we have to have a process in place to, to check and police these issues because we need to keep officers, members and members of the public safe. It's vitally important. And I think wearing a mask in a lateral protest might well be uncomfortable, but absolutely worth every second. But the other concern I've had is I keep going through this paperwork and I've not seen it mentioned unless I'm missing it about these 6 p.m. starts in the physical meeting. And I have to say this, if this is in there, this needs to be removed because I certainly I struggle to get home for 6 p.m. And there's no way I could get to a physical meeting by 6 p.m. You know, I don't mind giving up a day if it's a daytime meeting, but for every single evening meeting to have to um, leave early is ridiculous. So is it in the paperwork and is it possible to get it removed? Because I, I have, other than that, I agree with all the recommendations other than that particular point. Right, thank you very much. Um, I know that um, we've already had a, uh, a, a an intimation of a, of a proposal by Councillor Siddle, but uh, I, I think that this, mat that this particular matter has been discussed. I've heard pretty much everybody speak I'm going to move to the amendments now. Uh, there was a proposal by Councillor Swain to have um, cut down committees uh, that was seconded by Councillor Thompson. Uh, and what I'd like to do is if uh, Councillor Swain, did you want to say anything about that uh, amendation as the uh, proposer? Um, well, the point, uh, um, is uh, to um, minimise uh, the need for uh, giant expensive meetings externally uh, in the same way that with, with all the members meeting, um, we can stand it for the annual statutory meeting, which is vital. Um, but uh, for the short term, I would have thought we could um, uh, handle district planning um, issues in a a more balanced way and reduced in a proper committee in the chamber. All right. I just want to I just want to go back to Mr. Dodson, who's got an update on the timings. Mr. Dodson. Yes, thank you, Chairman. The the timings are based on council approved the schedule of meetings for the year. Now this was based on the, the time when we were were undertaking the online meetings. Um, but the schedule that was approved by members were for meetings to start at 6 p.m. So that is what is in the schedule at the moment, hence my reference earlier. It wasn't in these papers, but hence my reference to, to 6 p.m. because that is um, what's been approved by council presently. Um, I would just further add that the, the meetings do require um, more support from staff in terms of the streaming and the there's additional member support required for, for meetings currently. So that would be um, a, a staff pressure um, on evening meetings. Would I fully recognise that, that previously we, we supported evening meetings um, because that, that, that's the way it was, but it would be slightly more staff resource required. Thank you. Yes, I, I understand that. Um, but I, I can, you know, I think as Councillor Jarvis said, we. Initially, we were having uh, evening meetings, and uh, if we're looking to go back to normal, um, so Councillor Swain, your uh, proposal for uh, these cut-down committees, which I'm going to take a vote on in a moment, um, can you just yes. it tell was me for the chairman, vice chairman, and two others from each of the area committees to constitute the district planning meeting until the. Um, uh, until we can meet as a full council. Right, OK, so you're saying that the chairman, the vice chairman and two others, four from each, is that correct? Yes, that's the idea. 
Right, Councillor which Thompson, you originally... Sorry, I missed that. That which, which, which could be managed in the chamber. Right, Councillor Thompson, you originally seconded that. Are you happy with that proposal? I think it should be voted on. I, I must say at this point, I'm not going to support it. I did say that I didn't necessarily support it. Um, but I will leave the seconding in there and we'll see what comes of it. I'm, I'm getting a lot of nodding heads, I'm, I'm shaking heads. I don't think this is going anywhere, to be honest. Right, OK. Uh, now I'm going to go around again. I only want people to speak on this amendment, please. Um, Mr. Crouch, did you want to say something? Muted, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Chairman. Just to clarify the motion put forward by Councillor Swain, when does he want this to take effect? Because there is a district council planning uh, committee meeting planned um, for, for before the 6th of May, when obviously things change. So d does he wish this to take effect immediately or does he have another date in mind? In other words, post the 6th of May. OK, um, Councillor Swain, can you just briefly answer that question? Because yeah. I've got two more speakers on the original original amendment. Well, it would only apply um, after the 6th of May. Um, if, if there's a district planning meeting before that, it, it, it um, would be a virtual one anyway, wouldn't it? So that, that can be a, as um, all these virtual meetings have been. Um, the other end point then would be when um, uh, the COVID restrictions allow uh, full membership in the chamber. Okay, um, before we go any further, um, I, I've got two people who haven't spoken yet on the original uh, recommendations. That's Councillor Fleming and Councillor Stamp. So can I go, so I'll take the leader last. Uh, could I ask Councillor Fleming to speak, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. I wanted to speak about Councillor Sorry, Swain. Could I, just pause, could I just pause you there? Point of order, yeah. Councillor Boyce. Um, yes, Chairman, it, it, it um, is consistent with my previous uh, question. If you're going to change the makeup of a, uh, of a committee, that will need proper um, advertising to the public and it should be not something that can be done tonight. OK. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Chairman, but um, I, yeah, I agree with um, the council voice. I think we are wrong to put this. I was wrong to second it, and therefore I withdraw my second. Uh, apologies to council, as well. OK, uh, I understand that. Thank you for that. Um, in, in that case, is there before I go for a seconder, could I just ask Councillor Fleming to uh, to speak on the first three recommendations? Councillor Fleming. Thank you, Chair. No, I wanted to speak about Councillor Swain's amendment. I just wanted to say that I disagreed strongly with it. Okay. Um, I, think, I, think so that's... I wanted to make the point that actually district planning has been cancelled since November. We haven't sat at a district planning committee since November. So if there's suddenly a backlog of business now, I'm afraid that is most unfortunate, but the last five have been cancelled. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, Leader. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I actually uh, agree with the recommendations except for the 7.30 start. I think we do need to go back and um, I think it was Councillor Durham and Councillor Siddle spoke very eloquently and said, you know, this is it's because it's changing. We have to go through. We have to go uh, with government, government, government guidance. And I totally do, don't want the meetings to start at six. I'm sorry if it's an inconvenience to the officers and I know it will be and I know how hard they've worked, but I think it needs to go back to 7.30. Um, my main concern is how we're going to deal with the interruption which may be possible, which was raised by Councillor Skeens and Councillor Siddle, that if we go to do the statutory annual, um, and I won't mention anybody's name in particular, but what can we do? Because there's no point in us all going to a meeting unless it can, can take place. 
uh, because it is a waste of council money, whether it be £600 or £1,000 or whatever. And as far as I'm concerned, the council businesses, the council business would be disrupted. So I would actually ask that we either get a little bit more guidance from Mr Quelch, uh, because there, there is no point in, in having or attending an annual meeting which is not going to take place. For whatever reasons, whether we agree with whoever has said what, I personally feel we should take responsibility and make sure everybody's safe. I certainly didn't want to go back to face-to-face -face meetings, which I made quite clear at the previous meeting. Um, but I will do the same because it is, as I think Councillor Fluker said, democracy. We have to look after our residents and we should be seen to do what we can. And this, this council, if you don't want to work together, there's no point where you work together because we try to do the best from our residents. And I think it's really important that we try to do this tonight and but also respect the views of other councillors who share a different one from ours. But also those those views that you do share that are different from ours, I would ask that you respect our views as well. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Thank you, Leader. So I'm going to go back to Councillor Swain your, uh, with the proposal for uh, the cut down committees. Councillor uh, Thompson has removed her second of that proposal. Is there another seconder for these reduced numbers? Uh, Chairman, uh, um, in, in view of the lack of support generally, I don't think there's any point in going through a vote on it, so I will uh, withdraw the motion. OK, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, the second proposal was from Councillor Sybil, which want, and uh, he would like to take the committees back to 7.30. Uh, Councillor Siddle? Yeah, so my my proposal is, and, uh, and the first, well, I'm going to give two separate proposals. The first is in terms of the full council, uh, is that we move that the statutory annual we hold that meeting at 9.30 in the morning, which will then give a, a three hour meeting and then people can return to work, those that work in the afternoon. For the full, uh, for the, the council, <laughs> the committee meetings, the return of the committee meetings, that they are moved to 7.30 in the evening. So there's two proposals. One that the strategy annual takes place at 9.30, starts at 9.30 in the morning, so there okay. finishes by 12.30. Stop you there, Councillor Sidney. Yeah. It, won't, it won't be a new proposal. This will be an amendment. Well, an amendment, of, yeah. Amend the there are two amendments. Thank you. <laughs> there are two amendments. One for the 9.30. Point, point the of seven. order, Chairman, we actually haven't got um, a, propose, a, a proposition on the, uh, on the table yet, so Councillor Siddle's proposal would be the substantive proposal. Mm -hmm. um, Chairman, we did. I did it and Councillor Mays seconded it at the yes, beginning. It has, been, it has been seconded, Councillor Boyce. Thank you. Carry on, Councillor Siddle. So, so it, it is. So basically, we're going, in terms of the options, uh, we are going for the re uh, in terms of 3.10.6. We're moving to return to full council cycle with meetings larger than 17 and staff in the council chamber at 7.30. And then we're going for the statutory annual, which is part of the original recommendation, to be held at 9.30 in the morning rather than 11 a.m. Right, OK. Um, I need to go back to Mr Dodson, first of all. I see other hands. Mr Dodson. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just to advise, I think the from advice by, by officers, the setup time for the external venue would be about two hours in terms of putting all of the IT and everything in place for it. So could I respectfully ask for 10 o'clock to so that they're not starting too early and that still allows a one o'clock finish? I think that's acceptable. Oh, um, we, I have see. To, we have to come up with a compromise that works for everybody. Thank uh, you. Right, so, so sorry, proposal one is a 10 o'clock start and the second proposal is on ten points on on ten point six is it on the table that we return to uh, seven thirty three point ten point six we return to full committee cycles full physically um, 
and they start at 7.30 in the evening. Right, OK, uh, so. Uh, Does that need seconding? Councillor Mays, I'll second that proposal. OK, that's been seconded. I've, I've got several uh, speakers. Chairman, Chairman, this excludes the District Planning Committee, I think. Exclude excludes the district planning committee. Why would that be, Councillor Boyce? Um, the, the committees are going to be held in the council chamber. The district planning committee can't be. So that would that would be held like the statutory annual, wouldn't it? That would that would be an outside uh, that would be an outside venue. Okay. Um, right. I've got several several hands there. Um, Tara, could you just advise me of the order, please? And I'll try and write them down. Uh, yes, Chairman, of course. Um, I've got Councillor Morris wanting to come back, then Councillor Durham. Uh, Councillor Siddle's still got his hand up, but I, I'm not sure if that's still relevant. Um, Councillor Lagan and Councillor Mrs Channer. So I've got Councillor Morris, Councillor Lagan and Councillor Mrs Channer. The others have re removed their hands. Thank you, Thank you very much. Councillor, Councillor Morris, this will be on the amendment, please. Um, I'd just like to add an amendment to the amendment and possibly an amendment on that amendment, if that's possible. Um, I'd like to just say, why, why has no one given consideration to the outdoor um, venues we have? Promenade Park, Riverside Park, even the courtyard at Morgan District Council offices. Surely we could uh, do something with an outdoor venue which would uh, obviously minimise any spread of the scandemic. I mean, uh, um, um, COVID. Um, why has no consideration been given to using one of our own outdoor venues? It's May. We could uh, we could meet up outside at the end of it. We could uh, maybe do a pims o'clock and maybe a crochet, crochet or bowls or something. All right. Okay. I understand that... Uh... A, I, I think I'm not arguing against the point, but uh, we can't rely on the weather, and unfortunately, we can't stream outside. So, Umbrellas, and you can stream outside. I do it all the time. Councillor Durham. Chairman, it was a legacy hand. It has been removed, but um, I look. We're only talking. But we have one district planning meeting which is next week before the deadline. So let's get that out of the way. The chance of us having another one, I sincerely hope, between then and the 21st of June is slim. So let's just get on with it, please. OK, thank you for that. Councillor Lagan. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I just was to do the, uh, the recommendation, the amendment, Chair. Um, uh, recommendation C hasn't been included in the recommendation. And I'd suggest that that is one of the most critical points that this council does choose to adopt the, the suite of recommendations that the officers have, have detailed and put in, because this is a pandemic. I apologise for the 127,000 people who have suffered deaths um, because of COVID by some of my other members' comments. I'm, I'm very saddened by that. Um, and I know myself have been touched by people who have been taken with this awful disease. But I would like to ensure, Chair, that we do adopt a comprehensive suite of measures as per the officers have put in there. Yes, I, I can confirm that uh, C is included as uh, as part of the uh, of the original um, proposal, uh, which was seconded by Councillor Mays. Councillor Channer next. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd just like to say I'm speaking on the amendment. Um, Right. I, I will support it. I, I, I will do anything to help get the statutory annual going and the committee cycle returned. So I will support the 7.30. And if the 10 o'clock suits um, members and officers, I will go um, with that, Chairman. My question regarding uh, the procedure 10, I've had that answered. I, wanted to, I needed to understand the correlation of the procedure um, regarding the guidance, I think all members will wear the mask. I will because I have my husband and myself who need to consider various things. So yeah. I just wanted to be clear on that. But one thing I would like to say that's not with the amendment, Chairman, I have recently checked out because I was concerned about the district planning on the 5th of May. And my understanding is it's been cancelled, yet people are referring to it taking place. So I think we all need to be clear that the district planning and Councillor Fleming's right, they've all been cancelled. 
Um, so I believe it's not taking place. And I go back to my, my initial statement when I said I wanted, my desire was for full return to committee. It is democratic. Um, I'm happy with the time. And quite frankly, I did make the point that that would mean full council and district planning outside venue. So that's, I think, what we've got on the table. And I will be sorting, supporting the amendment, Chairman, um, with that agreement. Thank you, Councillor Turner. I can confirm that the meeting of the 5th of May has been cancelled, the district planning meeting. And I believe that's been moved to the 13th of May. Thursday, the 13th of May. Right, OK, so we, um, so Tara, could I just ask, are you clear on the uh, amendments? Uh, oh, I'm, being told, I'm being told that, uh, sorry, that that has not been rescheduled yet. OK, um, so Tara, are you clear on the amendments so far? Yes, Chairman. Uh, is it possible to have them up on the screen at all? Yes, Chairman. Thank you. Just while we're waiting on that, um, I do uh, I do thank members for your involvement. I think this has been uh, very well debated. Uh, oh, here it is now. So, uh, as you can see, A, that uh, we moving the statutory annual meeting to the start time of uh, 11 a.m., sorry, 10 a.m., to allow for this to take place at an outside venue. Uh, that members review the future meeting options in section 3106 and identify the preferred option. And that is that the council returns to full committee cycle physically with meetings larger than 17 members and staff off site and within the number held in the chamber with meetings starting at 7.30 p.m. Uh, and that is having regard to the risks set out in Appendix A uh, and accept any costs uh, which will be a budget pressure for the year. Uh, C remains unchanged other than the removal of section 310.7 and uh, the guidance, uh, as you can see, is there. Uh, I think I think we're about there. That's what we're voting on, A, B and C. Um, so I, I'm satisfied that everyone who wishes to speak has now done so. Uh, so first of all, I'll ask, uh, we can either go to the vote or we can agree those by mm -hmm. assent. Record the vote, please, Chair. Record the vote. OK, that's what we do. Is that seconded? Seconded. 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 Okay. Councillor Mays. Thank you. Can uh, Tara, in that case, could I ask you to take uh, the vote, please? Uh, yes, Chairman, just to clarify, members, this is the vote for the, to agree the amendment. And then obviously we would need to vote again to agree that the substantive once that, does that make sense, Chairman? Yes, thank you. OK, so members, to just um, indicate if you're for, against or abstaining um, when I um, call your name, and that's for the amendment as I just had on the screen. So starting with Councillor Bassinger, please. For, please. Councillor Miss Beale. For. Councillor Brian Beale. Uh, I've lost it. Councillor Bell. Against. Thank you. Councillor Boyce. For. Thank you. Councillor Mrs. Channer. For. Thank you. Councillor Durham. For. Thank you. Councillor Edwards. For. Councillor Mrs. Fleming. For. Thank you. Councillor Fluka. For. Councillor Hurd. Yes, I'm for. Councillor Helm. For. Oh, for Jarvis. For Councillor Keys. For you, Councillor Lagan. For please, Tara. Thank you, 
Me, Councillor Mays. Four. Councillor Morley. Four. Councillor Morris. This violates the Nuremberg Code against. Councillor Nunn. Four. Councillor Shaughnessy. Four. Thank you, Councillor Siddle. Four. Fully asleep then. <laughs> Councillor Skeens. Four. Councillor Stamp. Four. Councillor Fields. Four. Councillor Swain. Four. Councillor Mrs. Thompson. Four. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. White. Uh, four, please, Tara. Chairman, that's 25 for, two against, and no abstentions. Thank you. That is agreed uh, then. Thank you very much for that, members. So, Chairman, do you now want members to vote on the actual substantive motion? Yes, yes, please. Uh, um, could you just remind us of that again, please, Tara? Is yes, it... I put that up on the screen yes, again, please. Chairman. Bear with me. Um, Chairman, just to clarify also, um, Mr Dodson did make reference to a review. I wasn't sure if that we wanted to actually refer to that in recommendations. OK, can we just have a look at the recommendation first, please? If I just... Right, so this is the uh, this is the original um, recommendation as amended, Chairman. As the uh, the amendments have just been agreed by the council. Right. Uh, okay. So uh, I, I'm sorry. Can you can you help me with this, uh, Mr. Quelch? Is this this is to be agreed? Well, that's right. Now you, you councillors need to vote on the amended um, original motion. So, um, yes, you now need to go through, unless members are going to agree it by assent, general assent, um, then uh, you'd have to take a roll call again now to actually um, uh, decide vote, on please. that new, newly amended motion. Yes, so so I see, right. OK, I, I think this is the same same thing as we voted for before, is it not, Mr Quelch? Well, well it's with the amendment. Yes, you, you, you've already had a vote on the amendment. Yeah. Um, and, and now the amendment takes the place of the original motion. So now members need to actually resolve whether they accept the motion as amended. Right, OK, that's fine. OK, in that case, um, Tara, uh, I understand that uh, there's been a call for another recorded vote, and that's been seconded by Councillor Bell. So yes. we'll now go for the uh, roll call, please. Chairman, Chairman, before we do the vote, do you mind? Can I just seek a bit of clarification on one point? In terms yes. of the, in, thank you, Chairman. In terms of the timing, I understand the 7:30, and I'm fully behind that. But obviously, that's only for meetings that can be held in the chamber. So if there are meetings where there's a greater number than 17, uh, there's no sort of, uh, are, are, we, are we sort of assuming that it would be held, they would also be held at 10 o'clock? We don't specifically state that, but is that an assumption? Just wanted members to be aware of that. I think I think the 10 o'clock is, is purely for the statutory annual. Yes, yes. But, uh, uh, that's my point really, Chairman. I mean, I understand at the moment it says that, but uh, uh, num number B on here refers to holding full council meetings uh, in the chamber. Um, but if we were going to hold off-site meetings, um, there's no stipulation as to what sort of time. Uh, what, what, what is there an assumption being made that they would also be held off-site at 7.30, which is what it currently states? And if that is the case, that's fine by me. But I think if Mr Dodson had a problem with holding off-site meetings at 7.30, now would be a good time to say. I think you're right. Mr Dodson, would you like to uh, explain how we'd be able to do this, perhaps? Yes, thank you, Chairman. It was the 
the meeting was scheduled for the 20th of May for the um, statutory annual, and we need to do it before the end of May. And it was based on the availability of the venue. If we look at the um, availability of the venue at other dates, uh, okay. and it's available in the evening, then then the meeting can go ahead in the evening. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Dawson. Thank you, Chairman, for indulging me on that clarification. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so I just want to be just want to be clear what members are voting on now. So this this uh, recommendation here uh, is the amended recommendation. Am I correct? Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, in that case, can we? Chairman, can I say something, please? Yes, Councillor Edwards. Uh, mention was made of a review, but there's no mention in here of when a review would take place. Mr Dodson, could you help us out on that? Yes, thank you. The, the review will be made when guidance changes. Um, we'll obviously have to review risk assessments as guidance changes and um, look at the guidance and expectations as as well but until that guidance comes out from government um we can't really be any more specific than that other than saying we'll review as guidance changes that's what i'm saying it's not written on the it, review is not mentioned as guidance changes oh yeah, sorry an additional guidance that emerges from risk assessments yeah okay all right okay. All right, that's fine. OK, um, Tara, could you now please take the vote? Uh, yes, Chairman, of course, members, as before, if you could just indicate for, against or abstain, please want to call your name. Uh, starting with Councillor Bassinger, please. Four. Thank you very much. Councillor Miss Beale. Four. Thank you. Councillor Brian Beale. Councillor Bell. Against. Thank you. Councillor Boyce. For. Thank you. Councillor Mrs. Channer. For. Thank you. Councillor Durham. I can see he's got his agree sign up. Thank you. Councillor Edwards. For. Councillor Mrs. Fleming. For. Thank you. Councillor Fluker. For. Thank you. Councillor Hurd. For. Thank you. Councillor Helm. Four. Councillor Hull. Four. Councillor Jarvis. Four. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Keys. Four. Thank you, Councillor Lagan. Four, please, Tyra. And why does Councillor Durham think it's applicable to stick a cartoon thing up when he can speak for the rest of the meeting? I can't comment on that, I'm sorry. Um, Councillor Mays, thank you. Uh, four. Thank you very much. Councillor Morley. Four. Thank you, Councillor Morris. Nuremberg Code, against. Thank you. Councillor Nunn. Four. Councillor Shaughnessy. Four. Thank you, Councillor Siddle. Ah, it's done. <laughs> That's four. Thank you very much. Councillor Skeens. Four. Four, Tara. Thank you very much. Councillor Silks. Four, Tara. Thank you very much. Councillor Swain. Um, I'd better abstain. I was distracted um, for a couple of minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Mrs. Thompson. Four. Thank you. And Councillor Miss White. Four, please, Tara. Thank you very much. So, Chairman, the results of that are 24 4. Two against and one abstention. Thank you, Chairman. OK, thank you very much. Uh, just in order that we that we do keep uh, things on an even keel, uh, if we do take a vote, could members make sure that they all vote correctly, please? Thank you very much. Uh, I'm now going to move on to uh, agenda item number five, uh, which is exclusion of the press and public. Uh, so I move that under section 104 of the Local Government Act 1972, the public are excluded from the meeting uh, for the following item of business 
on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph five of part one of schedule 12a to the act and that this satisfies the public interest test. If any member wishes to second that motion, please unmute your microphone and state your name. I'll second it, Councillor Skeen. Councillor Mays. Councillor Skeen's got in there first. Thank you very much, Councillor Skeen's. Uh, are we, uh, so uh, can we agree by assent, members? Agreed. Agreed. Chairman, 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 and we need to um, be aware that the public have a great interest of, uh, in this. And there, within the agenda item, there is no reason given why we are going to discuss a course of action that is going to change our um, uh, decision uh, that's been previously made. Uh, and ha having said that, um, I think um, also, where are we with the six month rule on um, decisions of the council? Well, uh, so that, that, that is your question. OK, so, so this, um, this is actually really just to receive, uh, receive the, uh, some advice. Uh, it's not it's not a rerun of anything. So I'm satisfied that it can be heard. Um, yeah, oh, Chairman. Sorry. sorry. Can, uh, I, I'm sorry, I've got a hand up. I can't see who's Councillor Channer. Well, I think I've got to be careful what I say, but I'm my understanding of the recommendation is a bit is not quite that chairman. I think there's more to the recommendation. It's not just about receiving advice. Right. Um, I, I think that um, at this stage, uh, all we're seeking to do is to decide whether we should go into close or not. Uh, Councillor uh, Boyce has uh, spoken or questioned it. Uh, I'll go now to Councillor White. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, my query um, follows on from what Councillor Channa said in that I don't believe that we are just receiving advice. And I also, when I read through the port, report, I read it that, um, I can't remember which section it was in and I can't get it up because I only have the one screen that's charged, is that it didn't, it said that all the rest of it should be or could be, and I think it was should be debated in public and it was only the advice of council that should be um, held um, under PNC. So my concern is, um, why are we deviating from um, normal council policy? And why, when it should be in the public, it is a public matter, can we not discuss the meeting in public, but leave the council legal advice under PNC, which is where it should be? I, I honestly believe this meeting should be split into two parts, because it's in the general interest of the public and it, it affects them. And I think we are going against the council constitution. I mean, um, especially as it says in the report that it should be debated or could be debated in public. So what is it? Uh, is the Constitution wrong or are we wrong? Who's made the decision to put some of it in, all of it in PNC when only part of it has to be in PNC? Surely if things don't have to be in PNC, they should be open for the public. We've all got nothing to hide. But it's a question on, on, on the Constitution, really. Uh, Mr Quelch, can you help us with this, please? Yeah, yes, I think I can, Chairman. Um, um, contrary to what members are saying, it's quite normal council practice, actually, for legal, legal opinion, which is based on the contemplation of legal action against us, um, and members have already seen uh, what's in that report. Well, I'm not going to say too much about it because we're still in public session, mm -hmm. but um, uh, there is legal advice that 
could determine whether legal action is taken. Now, if, if members debate this um, legal advice and my report, um, and, and plainly the receiving of the advice will affect whether members decide to re to have the matter redetermined. So I don't think you can separate the discussion on whether the matter should be redetermined from the legal advice, because the legal advice is the only matter that you have before you, along with my report, which is based on the legal advice. So um, if members decide to to not resolve that matters be heard in P and C, then should members decide there would be that the advice is not accepted and there should be no redetermination, then that advice is available and everything that members say is available to a party that might commence legal action against us. Yeah. OK, thank you very much. Uh, I've got um, two speakers, Councillor Fluker, Councillor Lagan. Uh, I'll go to Councillor Fluker first, but I only want you to speak, Councillor Fluker, on whether we should or shouldn't go into private session. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chairman, and, and I, I, I'm, I'm grateful for what the monitoring officer says, but uh, I, mean, I mean, the mon monitoring officer gave us completely contradictory evidence, uh, I beg your pardon, advice uh, in relation to uh, two planning applications, one at land, land at Wick Hill, which members will remember, and also the geological survey at Bradwell B which I think members will remember, they were they were quite passionate. I, I'm sorry, Councillor Fluker, I must I'm ask sorry, you, Chairman, I'm giving I must ask, I must ask the you, if you please permit me, I must ask you to decide whether we are or are not going into private session for this. That's okay, what I want to speak to. Chairman, Chairman, I think it's very important that we understand what's happened in the past. And I was merely re reminding members of what happened over land at Wick Hill and the geological survey. I'm sorry, I don't think, I'm you're, I don't think you're hearing me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to move on to Councillor No, no, Lake. no, Chairman, Chairman, the public... I'm going to move on to Councillor Lagan. Thank you, Councillor Fluke. Thank you, Councillor Lagan. Section 100 A of the Local Government Act, which I believe... Uh, what the uh, monitoring office... It will leave... Councillor Fluke, please, 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 this council open for criticism. Councillor Lagan, you are... You are that is something I would not accept. Councillor Lagan. Thank you, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I'm grateful, um, like uh, Councillor Fluker, very grateful for the uh, information of the monitoring officer and sharing his his legal advice uh, on this matter. In my experience, in, as, as a member of the council, it's normal because of the potential risks to the council to discuss such uh, matters that could have potential implications in closed session. So uh, I'm very happy to adopt the, the uh, advice of the legal officer uh, and to move into private and confidential session to debate the whole matter based on previous uh, experience and previous matters that have been well advised. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Right, Chairman, thank you I very much. Back, it, it, no, you back. cannot. I'm going now to the go to the vote. Uh, Tyra, so vote, so I can't have a matter of clarity. Thank you, Chairman. Excuse me, Chairman. Is it recorded? Is that seconded? No, Chairman. Seconded. Seconded. Please take the vote uh, whether we should go into private session or not, Tara. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, members, if you could just indicate if you're for, against or abstaining for us to going into private session, uh, as requested, it is a recorded vote. Um, starting with Councillor Bassinger, please. Four. Thank you, Councillor Miss Beale. Four. Thank you, uh, Councillor Bell. She's, she's already gone, Tara. Oh, okay, sorry, apologies. Uh, Councillor Boyce. Uh, against. Thank you very much. Councillor Mrs. Channer. Oh, sorry, against. Councillor Durham. Uh, Chairman, you totally ignored my raised hand, and I was see merely seeking to offer my apologies for having to use my sign because my audio had failed. So you might have noted that I had to log out and log back in. So, Councillor. Lagan's information. It's, I was not disrespecting you by uh, not speaking, uh, but I'm against this. Thank you. OK, thank you. Councillor Edwards. Four. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mrs Fleming. Four. Thank you. Councillor Fluker. 
Chairman, I'm for, from the point of view of our legal advice, and I would have said that if the Chairman hadn't cut me off, but the rest right, of it should you're, be you're in public. The Thank public need much. to know. Can this is a cover-up, Chairman. Oh, it is a cover-up. Thank you. Carry on, Tara. Uh, Councillor Hurd. Oh. Thank you, Councillor Helm. Against. Thank you, Councillor Hull. Abstain. Thank you, Councillor Jarvis. For. Thank you, Councillor Keyes. For. Councillor Lagan. For, please, Tara. Thank you, Councillor Mays. For. Thank you, Councillor Morley. For. Thank you, Councillor Morris. Abstain. Um, uh, four. Thank you very much. Councillor Shaughnessy. Four. Thank you, Councillor Four. Thank you, Councillor Kings. Four. Thank you, Councillor Stamp. Four. Thank you, Councillor Stilts. Four. Thank you, Councillor Swain. Four. Thank you, Councillor Mrs. Thompson. Councillor Mrs. Thompson and Councillor Miss White. Four. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, the results of that are 19 for, four against, and two abstentions. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we will now, if you could, uh, Tara, if you could let me know when uh, we're in closed session, please. Of course, Chairman, just bear with me a moment. We'll just get the stream stopped. Thank you. Councillor Boyce, you've still got your hand up. 